Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sohini and I will soon be an incoming medical student in the US. Today I'll be showing you my entire AMCAS primary application, start to finish. Before I applied last year, I watched a video by Prerak Jutani, and he basically went through his entire primary application like I will today, and it was really, really, really helpful in me planning out what I was going to pre-write for my activity sections, what demographic information I needed to have, what transcript information I need to put on there, everything. I know that the application cycle will be opening up really soon, just about a month away, so hopefully you can use some of the things that you learn from looking through my application and you can apply it to your own cycle this year. And obviously I've blocked out some personal information as well as my personal statement. There are just some things on there that I don't necessarily want to share with the entire internet, but almost everything else on my MCAS application is going to be shared on screen for all of you to see. And I do just want to say my goal with this channel has always been to provide transparency around this application process since it is so elitist and at times convoluted. I really just want to show my experience applying this cycle and how it's been a little bit different with COVID affecting everything as well. If you're following along and taking down notes on how you might be writing or editing your own primary, definitely feel free to just pause at any time and read the stuff that's on screen. Great. Great. Okay, so the application starts off with some pretty basic information. So name, ID numbers, contact information, all that. Um, and so you can see here, my name is here, my MCAS ID is blocked out, and on the top, they do show the submission date and the process date. And so this is really important. I submitted my application about half an hour after it opened, and it was processed within a few hours, and I didn't have to worry about my application being stuck in the verification queue. If you do apply maybe, you know, a few weeks after the application cycle opens, it's not best just because your application might be stuck in that verification queue for up to three to four weeks. And when you're working with a rolling admission cycle, it's much better to apply as early as possible. After that, you kind of go on and they basically are asking about language proficiency. And this is important. You have some space here and on the next page to essentially self-report if you are coming from an underserved background. And then they also give you some space to write out if you are disadvantaged in any way. And then on the second page, you have another area to kind of write down if you are socioeconomically disadvantaged or if you identify as a first-gen student. If you uh, select yes, I believe, for the disadvantage section, you will be provided extra space to write an extra essay explaining more in depth about your different backgrounds and possible hardships that you faced on your journey into medicine. And these are really important to provide context to the rest of your application. So definitely be as transparent as you are comfortable being. Okay, so next is probably the most annoying part of the primary application. And essentially, you can look here, you have to go through and input every single grade that you've received on any course that you've taken in any sort of post-secondary institution. So that could be AP classes, community college classes in high school, community college classes as a student, or classes from a four-year university, as well as anything from graduate school. So it's a lot. And you'll need your course name, your course term, the grade you received, the hours you had, if it's semester or quarter, the name, the categorization, like everything. You'll need all of it. <laughs> I would definitely recommend investing a lot of time into making sure this part of your application is as accurate as possible because you might face some minor hiccups in the verification process if you mess up a lot of the inputting in the section. Another thing that they look at is it goes obviously in order and the admissions officers like to kind of look at a upward trend. I did get all A's in um, undergrad and then I had one A- minus in my junior year of high school. The calculus class that I took. At the end, what they'll do is they tally up your science GPA, which is BCPM, that's Bio, Chem, Physics, and Math. Um, I don't know what AO stands for, but it's essentially your like non-science GPA, and then your total GPA. And so you'll see right here that I applied with a 3.99 BCPM GPA, 4.0 non-science GPA, and an overall 3.99, so essentially 4.0 GPA. 
The next page after that shows all of your MCAT scores and this I believe is automatically inputted into your application um, because they link it through your ID number so there's not much you need to do here and if you have taken multiple tests they'll list them in order. Here I applied with a 519 and so I just want to take a moment and say that I did apply with pretty high stats so a 4.0 and a 519 but stats are not everything. You know, they get you through the door, they can make you competitive for competitive schools, but no school will take an applicant just on stats alone. In my opinion, everything else that's going to come in the application after this is way more important. I really felt like the cycle admission officers were trying to look for an applicant's story and really wanted to learn more about their journey into medicine. Stats always will help with that in supplementing whether or not they believe that you can do the work in medical school, but they're really looking for diversity and really just qualified candidates that have experiences that they can bring. Speaking of experiences, we can move on to the activity section. The activity section is quite a bit of writing. I think everyone talks about the personal statement as this behemoth thing that you need to write for the application, but the activity section deserves a lot of time. They'll give you up to 15 spots where you can write down up to 15 experiences that you think are either most meaningful to you as a person or in your journey into medicine. From the 15 spots, you can choose three that you can designate as your most meaningful experiences. And what this means is that they'll give you extra space where you can further elaborate on those three most meaningful experiences. I would recommend out of the three most meaningful, having one of them definitely be a clinical experience since you are applying to medical school. Having the second one be something that maybe makes you stand out, so like a research experience or a really great leadership experience, for example. And the third one can be kind of whatever you think is most meaningful to you. So for example, I chose my work that I did at the LGBTQ Center because I thought it really framed my application narrative together better. Before we get to my activity section, I do wanna talk a little bit more about thinking about your application, especially your primary application, as a narrative. I personally think that having kind of a broad theme that ties together all of your activities and your personal statement and later on your secondaries and interviews will help you stand out in the admission officer's minds. If they can look at a candidate and go, oh yeah, that's that's like the cancer research dude, or oh yeah, that person is all about you know LGBTQ public health, or that woman is all about education and using tools to kind of increase health literacy. I think that can only help you because when you're thinking about how they curate diverse classes, they're looking at diversity in terms of racial, ethnic, socioeconomic background, of course, but they're also looking at diversity of experiences, right? So nobody really wants a class where everyone's like super, super into research and nobody really wants a class where everyone is super, super, super into just one thing. You want a breadth of knowledge between all of your classmates. And so having a kind of niche that you are fitting into within your application, I think makes you stand out as an applicant. So you'll see throughout my application that a lot of my activities revolved around LGBTQ public health and health advocacy. And I spoke a lot about that in my personal statement, my secondaries and my interviews as well. I think that that kind of framed my entire application and allowed admissions officers to see what I was most passionate about because I did do work and research and theses papers and just a lot of community work in that topic. So let's kind of just go through and see how the activity section looks. I'll go ahead and put on the screen all of the different possible categorizations that you could put an experience down as. And here I put down my presentations and posters. I tried to put the title and then a very short version of the abstract down. You're not gonna have too much more space than that. Another tip I have in saving space, since you only have 15 spots, is trying to group together things that you could put into one activity. So for example, if you have multiple awards or recognitions that you wanna share on the application, you can put them all into one like I've done here. Okay, so here are more of the typical kind of activities. So we have community service volunteering, and that's medical clinical, um, another research thing, and then another <laughs> research thing. Um, and I've designated none of these as my most meaningful. We'll see in a second what that looks like. But here you can see that you need to put down the dates that you started and ended. And here's the thing. If you're applying in May or June, and you know for a fact that you're going to be continuing this activity until the end of 
that year until you basically matriculate into medical school, you can project out those hours as long as you need to, right? So I knew that I was going to graduate from UCLA in December, and so I projected a lot of those activities out until December of 2020. Another thing that I will say is that when you're writing these activities down, try to stay away from the format where you're just talking about your duties and responsibilities. If I talked about, for example, volunteering at a hospital, admissions officers know that you're not doing like the most exciting things, right? They know that you're not as heavily involved in the clinical stuff if you're just a normal hospital volunteer. And so you can abstain from talking too much about oh, I emptied the bedpans, or I walked patients around the room, or I helped pick up phone calls and discharge patients. Like, that's good, but that's what everybody does in that role. What's a lot more important is to share what you've learned from those experiences. What have you as a person gained, and how do you think that you can apply this to your own life? Another thing that I would stay away from is trying to relate everything back to medicine. Of course, if you are in the hospital and you're volunteering, there's a very clear connection as to, okay, well, I really like doing this, and so I would want to continue having these kinds of patient interactions as a future physician. If your like, favorite hobby is art and you're talking about how much you like to draw, you don't necessarily need to make a connection to medicine because there might be none and that's okay. You are a human being that's a full person outside of medicine and not everything needs to relate back to that. Here, I talk about um, volunteering at a podiatric clinic for unhoused people in LA. And so something that was really important for me to share was that in Indian culture, in my culture, touching someone's feet and washing someone's feet are just enormous signs of respect in our culture. It was a very humbling experience for me to be able to come in and wash all of the clients' feet from our clinic, be able to talk to them and make them feel pampered and respected for a little bit. That was very, very humbling and a very meaningful experience to me. Wasn't able to share everything that I felt, obviously, in how short of a space this is, but I was asked a lot about that in my interviews and it was meaningful to me and I wanted to try to convey that in my story. Scrolling through, the next thing you can see is much larger and I have designated it as a most meaningful experience. And so here I chose one of my most meaningful experiences to be the work that I did for over a year and a half, I think almost two years at the UCLA LGBTQ Campus Resource Center. I worked as an outreach intern and I was there for the transition into COVID virtual learning. And I really wanted to share how important it was to me as a person not even as an applicant, but just as a person, to be able to be involved in queer and trans community work in my university. But I kind of use this first experience description part that I've had for the other experiences to talk more about all of the leadership and responsibility that I needed to take on for that work. And then I have extra space here to then go in and actually talk about why this was so impactful to me. I stayed at this job and I love this job. I love the people there. And I really wanted to share how I was able to be vulnerable with a lot of the people that I led in my support group or just other people that I was talking to during my work, creating a community and actually feeling connected to the people that I was around. Here, I was able to fit four different chatting opportunities into one entire chunk. So I wrote the doctor's name, their specialty, the hours that I was shadowed with them for, and then their contact information. And I did that four times. I've shadowed through with a breadth of different specialties to gauge my interest in different specialties in medicine. And if they ever need to contact them, they have the contacts right here. Okay, and so here is another most meaningful experience. And I would not necessarily shy away from choosing most meaningful experiences that have nothing to do with medicine. I did this for one of my own because for the last three years in UCLA, I've been part of this club that leads LA Hacks, which is this big hackathon that we do every year. Um, if you don't know what a hackathon is, it's everyone comes in codes. It's more of a tech engineering related thing. There's not really anything clinical or medical about it. And I just fell in love with it. A lot of my really close friends are from that club and I love event planning. And so that's why I joined that club. And it gave me such incredible leadership and teamwork opportunities over the last three years that I would have felt weird not listing it as a most meaningful experience, and so I did. I used the space up here to talk more about the logistical work that I did and my responsibilities. And then I really shared stories about why working with this team was so meaningful to me. Late nights with coffee and chicken wings and the amount of fun that I had. I shared stories about, you know, the crazy things that we had to deal with in like a three-day hackathon. And 
I got asked about this all the time in my interviews because people were interested, right? This is something that's really cool and unique to me as an applicant and to me as a person. I think I was able to share a lot about my personality and my values through sharing this. My last most meaningful is the clinical one that I suggested. And again, you can pause and read through, but I, I wrote an entire story about how I was on the pediatrics floor for over a year at the UCLA hospital. And there was one patient in particular that just completely captured my heart. And I was with him every week for four hours during my shift. And I learned to really communicate with this four-year-old that really wasn't too verbal um, and was in just excruciating pain for just months after months about how I was able to sing him the Ansco Marching One by One Hurrah <laughs> song with little hand motions and that seemed to be the only thing that would calm him down from his pain and that humanizes hospital volunteering in a way that writing down my duties and responsibilities could never. Then some of the last things I put down are I did UCLA Chorale for about two years or so, and that was really fun. Like, I love music. I did choir all throughout high school, and I wanted to continue it for as long as I could at university. So I put that one down. I had a ton of hours, obviously. And the next thing is personal comments means your personal statement. I've blocked it out just because I'm not comfortable sharing that on screen. And then the last few parts are first your letters of recommendation. And so usually schools will have you do two science, one non-science, and then some other schools will also have you give like a research mentor or like an employer's letter. I had seven total and I didn't send every single letter to every single school. You can see on the side that I, you know, only sent one to like 10 schools and one to all 24 schools. And I think I'll do another video on letters of recommendation, but this is essentially where they would go. You have a section where you can input people's names and then they'll give you a letter ID. So here on the left. And I used Interfolio as the software service that essentially allowed my letter of recommendation writers to upload it to Interfolio. Interfolio would check to make sure it was up to regulations. And then I could just connect my Interfolio letters to my MCAS application. And it was really seamless. It's, it is a paid service, so it's not necessary by any means, but that's what you would kind of use the letter ID for. And kind of the last thing before we end is you have to select which schools you apply to. I'll do a separate uh, video on choosing your school list because it does change what kind of schools you should apply to based on where you are, your stats, etc. I listed down just some of the schools that I applied to. Okay, so hopefully this video helped you a little bit in kind of visualizing what the MCAS application looks like uh, before you actually have to go in and fill it all out. I would highly recommend looking through this video, looking through other resources online, and trying to pre-write as much of this as you possibly can. Okay, with that being said, I'm really excited to announce soon in a video where I'll be going to medical school. I'm just waiting to commit to them finally. And yeah, things are good. Things are good. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about in this video, please let me know and I answer every single comment that I get. I'll also drop my email down below as well as my Instagram. You can feel free to email me or DM me and I'm very, I'm pretty responsive <laughs> with um, my answers. Okay, bye friends, stay safe. Take care everyone, bye.